So just uh, giving a small introduction and the background. Uh, so as we know that the human population is expanding at a very rapid pace. So this has resulted in like uh, a competition for food, uh, space and shelter among uh, humans and the wild carnivore because they are encroaching the wild, uh, wildlife habitats. So these type of interactions may be generally positive and negative, but I would be concentrating more on the negative aspect of such interaction uh, because we have to face the negative uh, aspects of it to resolve such conflicts. Oh, uh, the IUCN, uh, when we say human wildlife conflict, the IUCN uh, Species Survival Commission Human Wildlife Conflict Task Force has defined or stated human wildlife conflict occurs when animals pose a direct or re and recurring threat to the livelihood and safety of people leading to the persecution of that species. So it has like it has negative impact on both humans and the wildlife. So generally speaking about uh, India as a country we have many types of conflicts uh, like for example like uh, when an animal uh, inflict damage on uh, damage to crops for example elephants in in kerala or uh, uh, in uh, in the central parts of india and in the northeast part of india and we have livestock depredation for example with brown bears leopards tigers and then we have some uh, many instances of uh, attacking humans also like uh, as an example of leopards bears and uh, elephants uh, uh, one estimation says that there's like around 600 lives are taken by elephant throughout asia so and 450 and uh, elephants are killed in retaliation so the need for this study the whole study the why is it needed because the it's very important to understand humans attitude and perspective and their knowledge toward uh, toward the wildlife that they are sharing the space with uh, because like if uh, if the local people are not accepting uh, 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 wildlife around their surroundings it's it's uh, I would say it, it would be kind of a useless like to to uh, for organization to come and uh, and give efforts in conservation of such animals because we have to understand like how what people think about the wildlife uh, so if there's some negative aspect we can change it through education and awareness and uh, having informal and formal discussions with them and there's very lit less literature avail available from this region one of the reason is uh, as i told you like it it's a hot spot of conflict between india and pakistan so most uh, until recently researchers from outside were not allowed to conduct any kind of research in that area and the same like there are many undocumented like not scientifically documented instances of human wildlife conflicts uh, occurs there when uh, a snow leopard or a brown bear attacks livestock and in retaliation the human uh, kill those animals so this this kind of studies uh, this studies this study will uh, uh, benefit the whole himalayan ecosystem because uh, we are generating as a general information uh, to focus uh, what things that needs to be focused to reduce such conflicts for example, if you see here a crowd uh, attacking a brown bear, and the fascinating thing about this uh, this situation is that the the brown bear was not reported uh, of any attacks on their livestock or any attacks on humans, but this was just an uh, inflicted in upon the humans, like because it was just attacked out of instinct because they think the brown bear so much in a negative. Uh, perception that they just resorted in killing him without even any reports of livestock depredation or any human uh, injuries the same is like uh, there's a snow leopard in a shed after killing seven or eight sheep uh, in a in a sheep shed so this kind of things makes the people more angry and they result in retaliation killings so the objective of this uh, particular study was to assess like how the students uh, perceive the wildlife of the region. It's a part of the bigger bigger project where we have uh, assess where we have tried to assess the whole like human wild carnivore conflicts in the region and the magnitude of loss, how much loss are, are people incurring uh, as he economic 
or tangible or non intangible losses also this is part of the big project so in this project we have tried to understand like how students in higher education uh, uh, thinks about or perceive about the wildlife of the region and how much they uh, have knowledge about the uh, wildlife so the significance of the research again like it's it's a novel of its kind in the region which will help uh, the future organizations or who want to carry wildlife conservation efforts in the region. So this is the study area uh, where we conducted the study and it's at the right uh, top uh, in the northmost uh, region of India where, where it shared its border with Pakistan. So uh, it's, it's a, it was a very conflict zone so much, there's no much literature available from the region. Geographically, it's a mountainous region uh, with altitude ranging from uh, 2,000 meter going up to 7,000 and 7,500 meter. And there are nine administrative, uh, administrative blocks in the region. And most of the, it's, it's a very uh, less populated, less densely populated region, around only uh, 10 people per square kilometer according to the 2011 census of India. And the three main rivers that flows in the region are Indus, Suru, and the Dras River. So the, tar the species that we have tried to study in here are snow leopard, and then we have brown Himalayan brown bears, and Tibetan wolf, and red fox, and Tibetan fox also. So we have, uh, during our study, we have uh, uh, seen that the local stray dogs are, have been a problem in the region both for wildlife and the humans also because uh, they are not dom domesticated at that level and as you see from the picture like they, they have been recorded chasing bears, snow leopards and snatching prey from them and uh, they have also been reported to kill uh, black neck crane which is the state bird of the of Ladakh and it's an endangered uh, bird species uh, so they have been reported to uh, attack and kill uh, killing uh, black neck cranes also so the methodology we used uh, as the study was um, taken place during 2021 where uh, the covid-19 restrictions were still ongoing so we decided to uh, make it uh, uh, adopt the online survey methods so we we distributed questionnaires among the students through various uh, student bodies um, in the in the region so these are the methodology we have adopted uh, for this study so in total we got like uh, 362 valid responses that were uh, that we used for the uh, for the for the study and 247 males uh, with 247 males and 114 females and islam was the main, uh, main faith that was followed by the respondents and uh, the main respondents uh, the majority of the respondents were from kargil block and the shakar chiktan block these are the these are the nine blocks of the region so these were the responses uh, from the uh, from the respondents for the statement that we asked uh, through the questionnaire so it's uh, it was surprising that only 70.4% of the students were able to identify uh, snow leopard because they they are the either uh, confused it with the tiger or lion but here we are talking about the students in higher education like in colleges and universities so it was it's really surprising that like 29.6 percent were still not able to uh, identify snow leopard which is a regional uh, regional animal of utmost importance in the region and again wolf was also like uh, identified by 86.5 percent like this was also confused with the dogs uh, and other canine species. And this is the response for the for the attitude toward like uh, what they want, to, how they want to perceive, how they want to see the wildlife of the region, whether they want to see it grow, growing or increase, increasing or decreasing in the future. So the, the green marks, uh, the green uh, uh, 
the green boxes shows that like they they have uh, these are the attitude with like more uh, more favorable uh, these are the favorable responses that we got for the res from the respondents uh, for the statements uh, that were positive in terms of wildlife conservation and uh, uh, about the wildlife of the region similarly when we ch uh, uh, when we did a spearman correlation uh, uh, test um, between the knowledge of and the attitude of the respondents it showed that like the knowledge of the student uh, impacted the uh, their attitude and perception to all wild carnivores it was slightly uh, positive but statistically like significant so the uh, the results uh, the results of the studies like this small study is consistent with other studies uh, from the past also where where they said like education can play an important role in uh, uh, in shaping the uh, positive attitude in the uh, among the people and uh, the study also showed that like they have favorable attitude toward the wild carnivore of the region and we have concluded that they, they should uh, the local government should prioritize the environment education uh, at higher education level because it was missing at uh, in the region so this is uh, another picture uh, like this is what we are aiming to like coexistence between uh, animals and uh, humans so if you can see there's a bear right at the top watching the people uh, taking their cattle for grazing in the mountains so they the people who are taking the uh, cattle to the mountain they are not scared of the bear uh, but this have been achieved through like various efforts by the organization there so slowly they have like the the mindset of the people are changing the picture that i showed you uh, where the people are attacking the bear is five years ago when the study was not uh, conducted and now we are uh, in touch with the local wildlife departments and other or organization working in the area to uh, to aware and like uh, to have discussions with the local people the, uh, for the problem that they are facing in the region. So these are uh, this is one of uh, this picture shows that what what we are aiming to is uh, our main motto is to uh, uh, to motivate coexistence between the humans and the people. So I would like to thank uh, University of Salford and Ministry of Tribal Affairs, uh, Government of India, uh, for helping me uh, conduct this project. And you can scan uh, scan that for more info on the survey sheet that we used uh, during the survey and uh, the forms that we have circulated to the students. I would I would like to give more time to questions rather than uh, the presentation if there's time still still time there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so the study's purpose was to understand the environmental impact of people and wildlife. No, the studies. Uh, this study's main uh, focus was like how do the students perceive the wildlife of the region. Like how do they, whether they want to like share the space with wildlife or do they have positive attitude towards the wildlife or negative attitude towards the wildlife. This, this like uh, we believe like uh, that uh, understanding the perception will play an important role because like if you don't know what the people, what the people on the ground who are sharing the wildlife, uh, their spaces with wildlife, if they don't want the conservation efforts, then how would we approach? So even if they have negative uh, perception we can work on it so this just uh, this study just shows like how do people perceive how do people think about it yeah yeah like uh, as i yes sorry about that uh, as i told you this is just a small fraction of our major project like where we uh, try to study like human wild carnivore conflicts in cargill and it started with like our studies our study starts with like um, assessing the magnitude of such conflicts like if one of the primary conflict uh, in the region is livestock depredation so the first objective of our uh, of this project was to assess like how much at how at what level this livestock depredation is taking place yeah so after that 
uh, after assessing the magnitude, we focused on like humans, like how do they perceive uh, sharing space with wildlife. So this is just a small part of the bigger project. Yeah, we, <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, again, like this is just a small part, small part of the project. After assessing the magnitude of uh, livestock depredation cases, we, within the same uh, questionnaires and uh, interviews that we did, it's, we, we tried to examine the perception of the people. And after the people, we have came to the students. So we have already studied, like how do the farmers perceive it? Because like uh, I have been to, through like many presentations and many sessions here, most of the people uh, and the speakers like, I like uh, that I like, or the, no, mo most of the speakers like focused on uh, uh, like understanding the attitude of the student because after they learn something, they will go home and they will uh, teach their p parents, their families, their relatives and all that. So. We are focusing more on the students also now because they are the future and they, they can uh, they can make a change happen. So this is again uh, this is just a small part of the bigger project. Yeah. Uh, that was a like, uh, really good uh, effort. And I just wanted to know like uh, the local government or the Indian government, especially in that area, uh, is providing some compensation to the you know the crop degradation or livestock degradation caused by uh, wild animal uh, because uh, that will also impact the response uh, that, uh, that the people perceive towards the wild animal. Uh. Yeah, yeah, that's really true. So we, uh, again, uh, during our uh, assessment of uh, livestock depredation, we asked the people like whether you got compensation because there's a scheme there to compensate people. So again, another thing is the compensation procedure uh, takes a very long time. The government compensation schemes to, to acquire the scheme, it takes a very long time. So some people just give up even uh, uh, by even not getting the compensation, they just give up because they think like it's just a waste of time and the compensation amount that the government gives is not, uh, uh, they are not satisfied with it. So they, they, the, we have a discussion with the uh, department out there. They have some schemes, but it, uh, the, we know that the government's main focus is not towards it. So we are trying to persuade the gov local government to uh, allocate more funds towards the compensation. But, co but compensation would just uh, bear their economic loss. But how about like intangible loss? The fear, uh, the emotions that they go through. Like there are, yeah, again to, to your question, we have, uh, the government have some uh, compensation plans out there, but uh, it's not practiced well and the the budgets uh, budgets are not allocated to that so it's still a challenge One last, uh, yeah question. like have you cited the cloud and leopard uh, like the, the least altitude uh, that you have cited cloud and leopard can you please tell cloud me and leopard yeah. so yeah. the study area doesn't fall in the habitat this uh, habitat of cloud leopard it's in the northeast this is this is right at the top of uh, india like it's kind of a cold desert. The, the region is kind of, a, it's referred to as cold desert. So um, it's not a suitable habitat for the clouded leopard. Uh, the leopard we are, he, uh, here we are talking about is the snow leopard. Yeah. Thank you.